Hey guys, I was just drinking a glass of wine the other day and I got a mouthful of crystals on the last sip and I'm sure this might have happened to some of you guys before. So why don't I talk about what those are? Um, are they dangerous? Should I care about them? And can you prevent them or how can you prevent them? But before I get started, make sure you swing by my website smartwinemaking.com to check out some of the articles that I post on wine and winemaking over there. And also make sure to subscribe by clicking the little subscribe button below if you're interested in these types of videos. But let's get to the chase here. So you could be drinking a store-bought bottle of wine and you pour that last little bit right from the bottom and sure enough, it's got something that kind of looks like sand. Um, it's gritty. Uh, you're thinking, how could this happen in a store-bought bottle? Well, it can, and it can happen even more in a homemade wine because a lot of people just maybe don't know what causes this. But these crystals that you'll find in the bottom of a glass of wine are, they're from the primary acid in the wine, which is tartaric acid. And a salt that can drop out um, if that acid is unstable is potassium bitartrate. You might know this as cream of tartar in your kitchen. It's that's what it is. It's cream of tartar. So is it dangerous? It's not dangerous. It's not pleasing. You don't want to get it in your glass of wine because it just kind of ruins that last sip. Uh, but if you if you look up what is or cream of tartar, you will see it is a byproduct of winemaking. So this is very, very, very common. And the key for you is make sure that you get all those crystals to settle out before you ever get it in the bottle. And there's a couple of reasons why this is important. First of all, because you don't want it in the bottle visually. You don't want that experience of someone getting them, you know, in their sip of wine. But the other reason is that um, as the, the potassium bitartrate falls out, it will cause a slight shift in pH, which can cause a slight shift in taste. So you want to make sure that you know, when you're doing your final blending and stuff, that wine is where it's going to stay so that you don't get a surprise later on in the bottle where maybe it tastes a little bit um, less acidic than maybe you thought you wanted it to or, or what it originally did in the bottle. So let's talk about what you would do to, to assure that, that those tartrates fall out well before you ever get to the bottle. And you might hear people saying, oh, make sure your wine's stable before you bottle it. And there's a couple things that that might mean. Um, one thing is like bacterial stability. You don't want it to bubble. You don't want it to, to have any bacterial um, flaws or issues or yeast for that matter. You don't want it to re-ferment in the bottle, but you'll hear people say cold stability. And that's really what we're talking about here. You want to make sure that um, that wine is cold stable. And what that means is essentially you're, you're making sure that anything, any potassium bitartrate that's going to fall out has fallen out before it gets in the bottle. And to cold stabilize a wine, what you'll do is you'll chill it. You'll chill it to ideally, you know, right before its freezing point, which is usually just above 20 degrees Fahrenheit depending on how much alcohol is in that wine. You could, anything below 40 degrees Fahrenheit will help a ton and you will see tartrates dropping out like crazy, especially in a high acid wine. Something like, uh, like a lot of white wines, uh, these crystals in this, this little cup here um, came from a Concord wine, which are notoriously high acid. So they've got a lot of uh, instability naturally. But you can, you can put it in the fridge, you can put it outside. That's what we'll do here in the north. We can put it outside when you get those nights that are high 20s, days in the 30s. It's a great time to cold stabilize. If you've got a garage that's not heated, that's a good place to cold stabilize. Or a basement where you've got a kind of a colder corner, it's a good place to cold stabilize. You're going to want to leave that wine sit ideally for a couple weeks, especially if you're on the higher end of those temperatures I mentioned. So if you're closer to 40 degrees, just leave it as long as you can leave it. If you're down at, you know, 26 degrees, you might be able to get away with cold stabilizing for um, a week maybe. 
And you'll see when you put that wine in there, if you check on it periodically, you'll see on the bottom just a layer kind of building up the sides of these little crystals. And sometimes on the edge of a carboy, you'll even see just little, little crystals like attaching to the glass, which is really pretty interesting. Uh, there are things you can do to speed up the process. So because it's cream of tartar, you can buy some store-bought cream of tartar. It's the powder, the white powder. And if you put, say, one or two teaspoons into that wine, you're gonna wanna pre-chill it. So chill the wine to your, you know, 25 to 40 degrees F, and put in one or two teaspoons of cream of tartar and stir it in real good. And what that'll do is it'll give the, the little crystals something to crystallize on, like a, you might call it like a nucleating agent. So just something to really start that um, crystallizing process and that'll just, it'll speed things up. So if you're not in a hurry, don't wor worry about it, but if you wanna be most efficient, you might consider taking some cream of tartar and, um, and kind of speeding the process with that. Uh, it's really, it's really something that is especially, especially a concern for your young wines too. So if you're the kind of person that doesn't bottle their wine until a year or a year and a half, you're probably a little bit, it's, it's just a little bit less likely that you're gonna see this, but this, the, the crystals here are from a wine that's from this year. It's only um, two and a half months old. And with these real fruity wines, I like to bottle them early, say within six months. And I, I really have to be super, super careful to um, just make sure that they're cold stable before I bottle them because it's really an easy thing to do. I've got a couple wines over there on the shelf that they just weren't quite cold stable. So if you give them away, you have to say, oh, don't worry about those crystals. And it's just not something that I wanna do. So um, hopefully this helps you with your home wine. Hopefully um, it didn't scare you away from home wine making if you got some little bit of crystals in your wine. And uh, if you have any, any more little tricks or tips, please make sure to write them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching.